Say, man, y'all looking to build some muscle, man? That's good, man. That's real good. Y'all have come to the right place then. The fuck out the way. Sorry, Kevin and Keith. Please don't sue me for copyright there, guys. But it is time for the Monday Q&A, so let's get to the first question. How would it impact strength gains to judge rest time between sets based on how you feel rather than setting a specific time and sticking to it, assuming you're still pushing yourself and not resting too long? Now, I'm going to go with the specifics of the situation. I didn't copy everything that she said, but this is one of my regular subscribers. I know that she's a younger female. She is interested in powerlifting. And she posted her numbers and the problems she's having with her performance. And in general, when you are training for strength with very low reps, particularly on big lifts like the deadlift, which is what we were talking about in this case, she was taking one minute rest times and she had got to a respectable five rep deadlift and was noticing on her later sets that she was losing the reps that she was able to do with the shorter breaks over time instead of continuing to get stronger. And this is a case of using too short of a rest time. When you're lifting heavy, particularly if you're doing multiple sets when you're working with five reps or less, particularly less than five reps, like in this case, and you are training with near maximum weights for those reps, on a big lift, you really need to take as long as you possibly need. You might need three minutes, you might need five minutes, you might need ten minutes. You take what you need if you are training for strength between your sets because you cannot sacrifice performance for a shorter rest time. There are ways to train for metabolic fatigue and using shorter breaks and there are benefits to it in some scenarios. Moving really heavy weight, it isn't one of them. So in that case, something like a minute is nowhere near acceptable. And yeah, you may very well find yourself losing strength like she was doing on the deadlift because of this, particularly on a lift like the deadlift when you're doing multiple sets, unless you're using very, very submaximal weight. All right, next question. Conjugate system for raw lifters. For those of you who don't know what the conjugate method is or the conjugate system, that is basically uh, what Louis Simmons has termed his method of conjugate periodization, which is really kind of concurrent periodization, which is what we use as slang term we call West Side Barbell, because that's where it originated. That's where they trained with it is at the West Side Barbell Club. Now, obviously, West Side System is a very, very good, very proven, very effective method for becoming a top lifter in equipped lifting. For raw lifting, the way it's laid out, it's not gonna work for you at all. If you wanna run a west side system based on that, you need to really be careful with how you approach it. First thing you've gotta look at is you've gotta use less accommodating resistance, especially for that max effort work. You can still rotate through lifts just like they describe it, but you do need to focus on some specificity of training. You're gonna to wanna to do a lot of pause benching you're doing things like squats, don't use accommodating resistance for your different lifts. You're going to want to stick with things like barbell squats, barbell pause squats, changing to different bars and doing the same things, but don't start adding different types of accommodating resistance. It's going to kill your raw squat. Same with the bench, same with the deadlift. With the speed work, you need to take the same approach. The percentages that they lay out in West Side are for equipped lifters who are now doing their speed work raw. You've got to re-plug in all of the numbers you're going to be working with a lot heavier weight compared to the percentages that they recommend for their raw guys as you start messing with a system like this if you guys go to like alex viata's site which is i believe it's called complete human performance he's kind of modified his own template for it he's got information on it he hits good lifts doing it as a raw lifter but he's modified it heavily to be able to do that because it's really written for equipped lifters now if you're an equipped lifter run it the way louis simmons says all right next question do competitors in lighter weight categories use steroids? If so, how are the steroids increasing their strength without adding mass? Well, quite frankly, you have to remember steroids are used everywhere. Lance Armstrong publicly admitted that he had used testosterone and growth hormone. Normally, you guys think of testosterone and growth hormone, you think of IFBB pros. That's a big boy stack. Yet, Lance wasn't that big. So, it asks a lot of questions of how do they improve performance for people in lighter weight classes. They improve work capacity, which means you can train longer to get better adaptations. They improve recovery so you can train more often to improve performance better. 
They imp can improve connective tissue healing, joint healing, connective tissue strength. They can even improve neural efficiency so that people get stronger without hypertrophy. So there's a lot more to it than that. And then the big kicker for guys in lower weight classes, drugs allow people to get leaner without losing their performance. So stop and think about that for a minute. If you can lose three to 5% more body fat due to the drugs that you could as if you were natural without any loss of performance, that also means you can replace that five or six or seven pounds of fat that you lost with muscle while weighing the same weight. Seven pounds of muscle can add a lot of performance for an athlete, particularly a smaller one. So the body composition effects matter because you can't get ultra lean without drugs and retain your performance. It doesn't work that way. But with drugs, you can. You have a much larger degree of wiggle room on how lean you can get before you start losing strength and performance. So they offer very clear advantages. And yes, they are used by lightweight athletes in every sport known to man. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.